Hey friends, good evening, happy Monday. I hope y'all are doing well and having a fabulous day. I wanna welcome you to week three of our development week class. I'm excited as we continue to dive in to explore what does it mean to be all in as a follower of Jesus. Uh, last, the last couple weeks, we've looked at a couple of things. We looked at some big picture global ideas of what does it mean to be all in. Last week, we looked more specifically at what I believe are three phases of, of the Christian journey, walking with God begins with knowing who God is, then then being with God, growing with him, and then finally doing the things that God has called us to do. Um, really, that, that's out of Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. And Jesus uh, went, went to Peter and then to some others and said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. There, there comes a point where we follow, where we get the introduction to know who Jesus is, where, where Jesus makes us, he transforms us, and that happens as we dwell with him, as we're with him. And, and then we move towards being fishers of men, where Jesus deploys us to do the same things that God called him to do. And, and so, so that's what we've been looking at the last couple of weeks. This week, week three, I want to look specifically at the no category. But before we go there, I want to take a couple of minutes in review. I also want to talk about our homework, because I gave us all a homework assignment. Now, for uh, those of you that are with us today, does anyone remember from memory uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2? If you do, let's take a couple of minutes wherever you're at. I'm going to pause the, the feed. I want to encourage you just to say it out loud. Uh, and then we'll come back and we'll go from there. Thank you for sharing that verse. The, the truth is that God has called us to, to memorize scripture so that we can be better prepared and better equipped whenever we're in any situation that's that's challenging. And so many times when we recall scripture, it enables us to, to fight fiery darts of the enemy. Um, it, just so you know, I participated with this with you. Uh, therefore, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. This is your true act of worship. Don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. So I'm, I'm there with you. I'm in the thick with you as we're memorizing scripture together. Uh, this week, I want to dive in. I do want to re revisit a couple of other things before we get into the rest of the content for the day. Um, you know, last week, we also talked about mathetes. Mathetes is the Greek word for disciple. It, it literally means disciplined learner or one who is intentionally invested in learning from his or her teacher or rabbi in order to do the same things that his or her rabbi is doing, almost like an intern in some ways. There, there's a lot of intentionality in soaking up as much material as you possibly can so that you can go out and be equipped to do the same thing. Um, Matthew 4.19, we've already talked about. That was simply uh, follow me and I will make you fishers and in the pattern of, of 
running after Jesus. There comes a point where we know Jesus. We get introduced to him for the first time. There comes a point where, where Jesus equips us and transforms us. That comes as we are living with God, as we engage with him through the spiritual disciplines. And then finally, there comes a point where we're deployed to do the same things that Jesus did. And, and that comes after we've done the other two steps. I believe there's a progression. and There's an intentional progression in moving from one phase to another phase, just like we talked about the, the Tony Evans example of, of the field, of the sidelines, and the stands. Or the field, the sidelines, yeah, the stands sidelines in the field how how there's only uh you know just uh, 22 players on on a football field at any point in time however uh, and there's a lot more people on the sidelines and there's a ton of people in the stands god never called us in the stands and doesn't want us in the sidelines he wants us actively involved in the game but in order to be in the game we have to be trained we have to be equipped we have to be prepared and those things happen as we know jesus and as we grow with him in community as we as we are being with him so so those are the, the three steps and the crucial steps i want to throw out a question and, and ask for for the average person that's that's watching tonight why can't you get out of the stands and just join into a football field today if you wanted to play football what would prevent you personally from being uh joining in an nfl level football game Whether you typed them out or, or you just shared them with those that you're watching with, that, that is a great example. The truth is, is that, that, that any one of us could strap on pads and a helmet and hop onto a field, but oh my gosh, we'd be radically mismatched. I'm 170 pounds, and so you put me up against a 300-pound, full-on, nothing-but-muscle linebacker, oh my gosh, dude, I'm going to be wrecked. Most of us, we haven't trained for it. We're not prepared for it. We need to be prepared for the game. The same is true with, with those of us who are following the way of Jesus. There are times where God calls us to step out and, and actively be in the game. And he prepares us when he calls us to do that. But more often than not, we also need that daily training, that daily spending time in the Bible, praying, worshiping God, engaging in spiritual disciplines, even fasting when God calls us to fast so that we can grow with him and gain a pattern of being uh, ready with him so that when the day comes for us to engage, we'll be prepared to do so. Um, I, I do want to say that there are times where God does invite us to get in the game with small stuff today, wherever you're at, whatever's going on. It, it Maybe you've been walking with Jesus for a week. God wants all of us to share our faith with other people, but he also wants us to be prepared for, for bigger and, and greater levels of responsibility and engagement. And the more you spend time with the Lord, the more God gives you resources to do that. Um, you know, I, I even, you know, I was thinking as I was preparing this lesson in, in Mark, there's a, a place where, where the disciples, 
went out and they tried to do some stuff in Jesus' name. They tried to cast out a demon and they were unsuccessful at doing so. And Jesus came back to them and said, this kind of demon only comes out by fasting. After he said, oh, you unbelieving generation, what am I going to do with you? He was frustrated because the disciples took on more than they could chew, in, in part because they weren't really engaged with God. They weren't growing in the disciplines to be prepared for battle. So, so the same is true with us. We need to engage with God before we can grow to be where God wants us to be. Now, I want to talk about growing in the no category specifically, and how do we get there? What does that look like? How, how can we fully know who Jesus is? Well, I want to start off by, by having the conversation and exploring what does knowing God mean? You know, we talked a couple weeks ago uh, about, the, um, about the gospel and, and what is the gospel. I think it's always helpful for us to repeat what the good news is. What is the gospel story, the euangelion of how Jesus came as Emmanuel, as God with us, and lived and walked the earth, lived a sinless life, so that he could be uh, a substitute for our sin. So if you were to explain the gospel to someone that you know that's, uh, that doesn't follow Jesus, how would you explain it? Just as simply and as fully as you can explain it, what is the good news story? What is the gospel of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection? Hey, you shared some great ideas. Thank you so much for sharing with me. Now, for those of you who've been walking with our church for a while, you probably over the summer were exposed to a curriculum that, that we walked through as a church family through all of our community groups. Um, uh, some curriculum that was printed by the North American Mission Board called the Three Circles. Um, I have, as I'm playing with my phone, sorry guys. <laughs> I have a, a band that, that illustrates the, the Three Circles of what does it mean to walk with Jesus. So I'm actually going to put a diagram on our screen here so you can see it. It basically involves the gospel message, which is all about what Jesus came to do. But, but it begins with God's intentional design. God had a good design for us. That good design uh, was for us to walk with God, to not be in sin, to have no suffering, no disease, no brokenness, no sorrow. Um, the reality is, is that, that at some point sin entered the world and that sin has led to a whole slew of brokenness. I had a great conversation uh, last week over text with someone who was trying to recruit me for their political party in, in Florida of all places, kind of interesting. And so I, I pinged back with her, went back and forth for quite a while, just asking, what uh, do you believe is the greatest problem that we have in the world today? Her response back was that, that it's, it's COVID-19. And I said, well, that's one problem, but I think the biggest problem is brokenness. The truth is, is that brokenness is a radically big problem that, that leads to racism, that leads to broken marriages, that leads to 
people fighting and people hurting each other and doing bad things, um, it all comes from brokenness. We're all broken. We're all in desperate need of healing from our Savior, Jesus. But the truth is God didn't leave us in brokenness. See, God sent the person of Jesus of Nazareth to come to live and to die to take care of our sins. And so if we choose to repent and believe, we can enter into, re-enter into God's design because of the gospel message. And so you have three circles of, of God's design of brokenness and the gospel. And the transition of those three circles is pretty powerful. It's an easy illustration to describe to anybody to describe what the significance of the gospel is and how we can find wholeness and new life in and through Jesus. Whether it's that one, whether it is the Romans road or some other example, I encourage you, memorize something, know it, be prepared to share the good news with anyone you encounter and share it as often as you can. I read some stats last week that were actually staggering. Um, 90, somewhere between 90 and 99.5% of churchgoers know the gospel, but don't do anything with it. Literally, they do nothing with the gospel. They don't share with their friends or their neighbors. They don't engage with anyone with the hope of the gospel. Anywhere between half of a percent and 10% of churchgoers are the ones that are actively doing anything with the gospel to invite people to know Jesus. It's no wonder in some ways why our culture is broken and why we're not seeing more people, at least in our church in First Baptist Tulsa, come to faith in Jesus. If those national stats hold true with us locally, we've got some work to do, but it begins with us. God wants us to be involved in the process of inviting other people to surrender to him. Paul actually wrote in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 that God invited us to be ambassadors of reconciliation because of the work Jesus did in and through the cross. In Jesus, we have been reconciled and made whole. And then God invited us to participate with him in inviting other people and beseeching people and challenging people to find the wholeness and healing that can only be found in and through the cross. So we're called to be ambassadors of reconciliation. An ambassador is one who's actually sent out with the same authority, weight, and responsibility as the person himself. Almost literally like a political ambassador. That's what we typically think of. Someone who's an emissary, who, who represents the country, who literally can speak before other political officials with the same weight and authority of, of that particular governing entity. In the same way, we have been commissioned to go out with the same weight and authority of God himself because of the work Jesus did through the cross to invite other people to find the hope and healing that can be found through the cross. And so I encourage you, memorize maybe one of several paths. The Romans Road, if you don't know it, I'm, I'm gonna put it on the screen there. It's this, Romans 3.23. All have sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard of perfection. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin or the consequences of sin is death. Romans 5.8, God demonstrated his own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Jesus died for us. And Romans 10, 9 and 10. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Because it's, with, it's, it's when we confess with our mouth that we're aligned with God. And when we believe in our hearts that, that God transforms us and makes us whole. So the truth is this, that, that we need to have some path. Another path could be this one. It could be um, just uh, walking through the Gospel of John. You know, John 3, 16 and 17 says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For, for God didn't send his Son in the world to condemn it, but to save it. That's a powerful one in and of itself, because so many times we think of Jesus as condemning, or God as condemning, but that's not at all what happened. But then you can go through, and you could maybe go through some I am statements. Jesus said in John 10, 10, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy but I have come to give you life and give it abundantly. You could ask, what, do you feel like your life is abundant? Do you feel like you're missing anything? And then go from there. Um, maybe you can go to John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, the only way to get to the Father. Because the truth is that, that so many times while we think there are many ways to get to God, there's only one. And, and you have, you, Jesus didn't mince words. So you can quote C.S. Lewis here and say, either Jesus was a liar, he was a lunatic, or he really was who he said he was and was the son of the living God. We need to have some path to be able to share the hope that we know to be true in Jesus with people around us so they can experience God's love and God's grace and God's truth. The only way that that's going to happen is through us sharing. You know, God could have chosen to use rocks, but he didn't chose to do that. Instead, he chose to use us and appointed us to be those ambassadors of reconciliation. So I encourage you and challenge you, be prepared to 
to share your faith. Memorize one of those roads, whether it's the Romans road, whether it's the three circles, whether it's the Gospel of John, or some other means. Be prepared to share your faith. And let's actually practice that next week when we get back together. Now, I also want to talk a little bit more about what does it exactly mean to be a Jesus follower? And, and how can we describe to someone what does it mean to be a Jesus follower? So if you were to describe what does it mean to be a Jesus follower beyond being saved, what does that mean to you? Whether you were brainstorming or actually typed that out, thank you for taking a couple of minutes to think through that. The truth is, is that God has called us to live a life full of, of surrender. And we looked at Romans 12, 1 and 2. God has called us to live a life full of abundance as he lives in us, as, as he increases and we decrease, as, as John the baptizer said in John 3.30. Um, we get to live a life of, of peace. Jesus himself is our peace, who broke down the wall of hostility, it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. So, so we get to experience life in a whole new level. Now, it doesn't mean we're not going to walk through difficult circumstances. The truth is that we probably will walk through difficult circumstances. But in spite of those difficult circumstances, we have one who will walk with us, Emmanuel, God with us. God did not, God, when God saw the world and saw sin, he, he didn't want to leave the world alone in its sinful state. So he sent Jesus to be a substitute for our sin and invites us to walk with him because of the work Jesus did through the cross. In case you haven't gotten it yet, the gospel is very important and is crucial to everything that we do. The gospel is the starting point, and as we know the gospel and as we know it more, that helps us to know God, to engage with him in a greater way. It helps us to know how we can approach the throne of grace with confidence, as the author of Hebrews says, because of what Jesus did in and through the cross, we have that capacity to run after God and to surrender more to him. So I want to encourage you this week, spend some time studying the gospel message. And honestly, I've got a few questions to, to end to chew on, and, and that's going to wrap up our time for today. It's, it's not a whole lot today. Next week, we're going to come back and we will look at some more things and look specifically at the B category as we transition to, to learn a little bit more how we can grow to be closer to God and what some disciplines look like. I'll probably give you the homework assignment to look at some, a few specific disciplines and practice those in the coming weeks. Um, but so the final questions I've got for us is this. Why are these tools important? Why do you believe these tools are important? Why do they matter? What do they do to help us and what do they do to help others? And how does evangelism for every one of us um, 
in a way, be all in? Those are great questions that you want to think about this next week as you memorize one path to help people know who Jesus is and what Jesus did through the cross to give us new life. I hope you have a great week. I want to end by praying for us, and then we'll see you guys next week. God, today, I pray that your grace and your peace would cover us and go before us. I thank you so much for the work that you did in sending your son to die on the cross and rose from the dead so that we could have new life. Lord, I thank you for the incredible gift of life and hope and love. I pray that your peace would guide us and direct us. May you encourage us this week. May you help us to grow. And I honestly pray that you would place in front of us an opportunity to share your faith and your love with people around us. Lord, may you do what only you can do so that people far from you may surrender to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, friends, have a wonderful week. God bless.